Jung Hee Kim, stage is all yours. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, uh, yeah, you may feel a little bit strange thing here. Uh, the slide is from PyCon US 2023, uh, uh, held uh, um, this April in Salt Lake City in the USA. And uh, yes, but I have added some uh, more contents, so let me change up. <laughs> like, uh, and so uh, first let me introduce about myself. So uh, I have given many serial talks in PyCon KR, JP, and APEC. So this is the second time in PyCon APEC uh, talk. And uh, I'm based on Seoul in South Korea, and I'm a CTO and co-founder of a, like a, a AI enterprise solution startup uh, called LabLab. And, uh, uh, I have a very strong interest in systems programming and uh, uh, network systems, distributed systems with acceleration of hardware. Uh, so I did a PhD in computer science uh, with the topic for packet processing frameworks using DPDK and GPUs and Intel Xeon Phi uh, to automatically load the balance to maximize the throughput of a system. Um, yeah, and uh, I have been using AsyncIO for a very long time. Uh, it's almost 10 years now. So um, uh, during that experience, I could had chances to contribute uh, new AsyncIO-based libraries as also some parts of the core AsyncIO. And I'm also a hobby pianist. So. Uh, so uh, uh, just. Uh, before going into the presentation, I'm also going to introduce about my company because my companies are very tightly coupled with the Python ecosystem. So our key product is backend.ai, and which has been developed for about more than eight years. And uh, we are using, we are a very heavy user of AsyncIO and the related ecosystems, including AIO HTTP and AIO Docker, and SQL Alchemy is the native AsyncIO support since its 1.4 version last year, and so on. Also, we have made many uh, async native open source projects like AIO Tools and Calosum, which is an RPC transport library with uh, replaceable uh, like a serialization layer and RPC layers and underlying transport layers with zero MQ and so on. And uh, also the AI monitor project, which I'm going to explain in this presentation. So uh, actually the, the first half part of this presentation is taken from the PyCon US talk this year. And uh, uh, but after the PyCon US, I have several key updates in the AI monitor project, including uh, uh, when, uh, integration of my fork to the original official project, and uh, also introduction of new GUI based on uh, Guanan's talk <laughs> uh, just uh, two hours ago about uh, HTMX and uh, Tailwind CSS and other uh, like a kind of backend friendly uh, web frameworks. So this is a talk just uh, two hours ago. Yeah, and uh, so uh, let me first start with uh, some technical challenges when uh, debugging async of your applications. So uh, there are several hard problems uh, because uh, when you run like thousands of GPUs and hundreds of uh, computing clusters and things like that, then uh, we are seeing a variety of concurrency issues uh, based on uh, async IO. So uh, for example, uh, if you can observe the tracebacks of some like logical pro problems, then it is relatively easier to pin down the root cause. But uh, when the problem comes like uh, memory leaks and the CPU hogging and like a slowdown of the system, things like that, then it is very hard to diagnose uh, what is the root cause of the problem. So uh, in uh, such cases, we need to uh, like, uh, uh, be able to do a post-mortem analysis. Uh, for example, uh, like inspecting the detailed log messages and so on. Uh, but this also becomes very difficult when it comes with uh, like a third-party cause that I have no control. And, uh, 
uh, uh, when this happen in remote air gapped uh, clusters that we don't have like a, uh, real time uh, interactivity. So how could you, we handle these kind of problems? So uh, I'm going to categorize the approaches in two axes. So the first axis, what to utilize, the vanilla uh, standard libraries uh, utilities and the, some uh, third party uh, libraries. And the uh, second axis is to when to engage uh, uh, to tackle these problems. For example, prevent uh, before happening them and uh, live inspection and uh, uh, post-mortem debugging. So, uh, yeah, so to prevent these kind of problems in the first place, we need, we need to uh, adopt concepts like, uh, 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 what do I say, uh, structured concurrency, uh, such as the new task group API introduced in Python uh, 3.11. And, uh, uh, but this, in this talk, uh, we are going to focus on the debugging in live inspection and uh, post-mortem analysis using AI monitor projects. Yeah. So uh, in trace specs in uh, Python, it provides some information like the type and arguments of uh, the exceptions and the, the exact location where the exception is raised in the stack. Uh, and um, so, uh, but I don't think these are sufficient for debugging complex async applications because uh, just cancellation is a type of exception in async applications, but it is a very vital signal to uh, like uh, shut down the entire applications gracefully, especially when there are many concurrent tests are ongoing. So. Uh, if some, if there were some cases that third party libraries just uh, silently swallows uh, the cancellation and uh, 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 and uh, or the task exists without any ex explicit error uh, logs uh, when uh, the garbage collection is happened long after the actual exception is happened. So these kind of problems make it very difficult to uh, develop things. So I, uh, I narrowed down the uh, solution to that we need to know who canceled the task and who created the task. And we need to be able to see all the chain of uh, the task uh, stacks. So yeah, this. Uh, so uh, this is a, like a simple uh, visualization of some situations like that. So uh, uh, basically, an async IO application is composed of many uh, tasks interacting with each other and spawned by uh, some other task. So uh, it is like a debugging of multi-threaded applications that has a lot of frequent interactions between uh, threads. Uh, but for threads, we have many uh, like existing debugging utilities and uh, like methodologies and so on. But uh, for a SyncIO ecosystem, we did not have such a good support yet. So that's where I'm going to uh, develop AI monitor. So uh, let me first introduce the uh, version 0 0.5 of AI monitor uh, with its brief architecture. So, um, so. Uh, it, sh it shares the same architecture from the AI Lips, the original version, but I have updated many uh, new features, including some uh, like a nice uh, talent user interfaces and other uh, like a task cancellation trackers and task creation trackers and task termination trackers and so on. So uh, basically when we are going to uh, introduce AI monitor to your existing async IO applications, you first need to wrap your uh, main event loop function with the start monitor uh, context manager. So then it uh, extends uh, the ex existing event loops like uh, uh, methods like uh, creating new tasks and uh, customizing task factories and things like that to uh, insert the transparently extending uh, task objects and classes to uh, enable several types of tracing. So, and it also spawns a separate uh, AI monitor thread that uh, uh, provides visibility of such information to uh, the developers or operators uh, with the telet commands. Yeah. 
So this is a very uh, quick, uh, minimal example how to start with uh, uh, AI monitor uh, when you write on a sync AI applications. And uh, this is uh, like a quick uh, help message to, you can see in the tele interface about the comments. I'm not going to go into the details of these comments now because we will have a nice GUI demo in the end of the talk. And um, so my additions in the AI monitor compared to the original project is that uh, addition of task creation, termination, cancellation trackers with some uh, new features like automate, uh, auto completion and the click integration for the rich CRI. So uh, the task creation chain tracker uh, tries to answer who created this task and uh, that task is created by who and that is created by who and so on. So um, I uh, used a syncio.set task factory method to uh, provide a, a custom trace task class which keeps track of uh, the uh, chain of creation uh, task when it calls create a task methods. So uh, yeah, let me go through the diagram here. So it basically keeps all the chains of a task using a weak reference, uh, weak key dictionary, uh, which, pro which automatically uh, garbage collected when the tasks are terminated. But uh, so uh, here uh, there is an assumption that um, uh, if a task is alive, then its parent task is also alive, uh, so that we so that it can trace uh, the uh, life stacks of the uh, task uh, creation chain. Uh, this assumption is uh, kind uh, may look like a very artificial, but I think it, this is a very crucial assumption, and it should be guaranteed for many kinds of async IO applications to uh, get a kind of a safe cancellation and safe shutdown uh, without any memory leaks when it runs for a long time and things like that. And that's why uh, Python 3.11 has introduced the Task Group API. So uh, yeah, I built upon that kind of uh, assumption uh, in when writing AI monitor. And the termination tracker is uh, does the same thing for uh, the termination. So uh, I had a, uh, in trace the task, I had a task done callback, uh, which uh, uh, saves the stack information of where it is terminated. But in this case, uh, the task is gone away, and the, the task itself is uh, garbage collected after termination, so I have to copy some information uh, to uh, like a history uh, storage. So to prevent memory leak when there are like a, a continuously spawning and destroyed tests over time, uh, I have set a, like a history limit and uh, also I have added a decorator function to a task that preserves the termination logo forever for later inspection. So uh, this is uh, actually inspired by one of my customer case where I got a very strange, uh, like a, a getting stuck uh, problem in the uh, production setup uh, because a crucial task was silently terminated and after hours we could you detect, oh, this is gone, the, but the, already the trace history was uh, field, so I could not get the why it is terminated with what kind of exception and things like that. So uh, uh, I added this feature to uh, remedy that kind of situation. And the cancellation tracker works in similar way, and uh, uh, we use uh, we try to move the post-processing overhead from the application thread to the monitoring thread. So it just copies some inf information and enqueues on a Janus queue. Janus is a, like a sync, a sync queue proxy library. And um, then uh, later uh, processing the information to display on the telet and the debugger interface. So also I added several new goodies like uh, click-based command structures and argument parsing improvements and things like that because the original library had a very simple like a string split based uh, command line processing. And uh, I also uh, reserved the uh, support for the concurrent teletation sessions issues by uh, making the server-side implementation as a proper async version. 
So this is uh, some screenshots and of the CRI part. And you can see the uh, live task and filtering of the task by its names and the quality names and the list of terminated tasks and so on. And you can uh, trace the uh, who, which task is created by who or terminated by who like that. So th that was the, uh, my PyCon US talk and this is the new, ver new updated part. So I have updated uh, AI monitor version to uh, 0 0.6 after getting hooked by Conan uh, <laughs> about HTMX and RPINJS and Tailwind CSS in PyCon KR's sprint in August. So, uh, so I set the goals for uh, web UI uh, expansion in the AI monitor. Uh, first of all, the most important requirement was that it should be rewritable re by backend developers because uh, AI monitor is not a kind of end user product. It's uh, for like a developer utility. So, uh, and it would be used by backend developers because who uses async IO in their application code. So uh, I thought that the core logic should live in the Python side and uh, because nowadays many uh, like interactive features on are implemented in the front end side with like complicated JavaScript stack, uh, and uh, uh, also I wanted to make it pretty. Of course, uh, people like the pretty things, so I wanted to use uh, like a good default design framework, and uh, I wanted to avoid uh, installing like extra tool chains and build chains for JavaScript such as transpilers and bundlers and things like that. I don't want to get involved with that when developing AI monitor. And um, I thought that uh, changing some part of code should just be reflected whenever I reload the page or just restart the application without building or compiling anything in like background and blah, blah, blah. And uh, also I wanted some small download size because it needs to be fast and should not impact the original application's performance. And also I wanted to, wanted to achieve clean separation of the user interface and the core logic. So uh, in uh, 0.5 and in the uh, original version of AI monitor, it has uh, uh, some like a coupling of the uh, console interface uh, code and uh, uh, actual monitoring uh, core logic. So in the same uh, dot monitor module. Uh, but I separated and refactored the code to have a separate term UI and web UI. So all the user interface specific calls are uh, refactored inside these modules and now they are isolated uh, with some shared core logic in the monitor module. So I uh, adopted HTMX and the mustache.js and alpine.js and tailwind CSS. So uh, HTMX is uh, like a, a kind of Ajax wrapper uh, to promote server size uh, business logic writing in uh, applications while keeping the application look like uh, interactive and responsive in modern web browsers. So I think the details are already uh, introduced by Conan. And uh, uh, Mustache.js is uh, like a very simple JavaScript client side templating library uh, which can render some JSON responses into HTML3 because I wanted to make the server side to simply uh, like speak some JSON responses instead of rendering all the fragments of HTML uh, in uh, when I use HTML. So, and uh, Alpine.js is a kind of component state management library which allows you to write some uh, nice looking animated check buttons and input text boxes uh, which has some kind of state values. And uh, Tailwind is uh, like uh, one of famous UI design library. So uh, I'm going to go to show a little demonstration here. So, uh, okay, here. So um, let me start some demo here. So I, this is just the code I wrote yesterday. And it starts and uh, you can see here the GUI works. So I think the, yeah, I'm going to. Uh, 
So here there is uh, the main, uh, I think, uh, task and the two timer loops that runs forever by uh, slipping and uh, spawning some extra uh, task. And uh, these are the tasks spawned by timer loop. And also uh, it has a small uh, web server. So it just uh, slips on the server side. You can see there are uh, additional tasks created by the web browser and AI HTTP to handle these requests. So here, for example, if you look into the inner task and uh, click the trace, uh, you can see the which part where the task is created. So here, the AI HTTP creates a, a task for request handling in the request handler. Uh, I uh, it, uh, it is changed by other parts and uh, task group creates a, another inner task and uh, created another inner task and things like that. All these chains can be traced in life. And, um, and you can also just uh, directly cancel this task and uh, you can see how it goes on like that. And uh, here, uh, yeah, I canceled and uh, the slip is interrupted and it just uh, responded right away. And uh, if I cancel the timer loop here, then it is canceled and then you can see the terminated list here and uh, you can see it's uh, uh, canceled. So uh, currently for this demo, I limited the history size to just 10 tasks. So, uh, the tasks are continuously respond and destroyed, but only uh, like a limited number of task history are available. But uh, for timer loop, I uh, attach it, uh, I set it uh, like a preserved termination loop decorator. So uh, the timer loop survives the history limit. So uh, to filter a uh, uh, task like that, you can uh, use the GUI here. Yeah. And also uh, here. You can uh, like uh, live uh, filter the task by its quarantine name or the task name, name things like that, or just to see the main and things like that. So all these interactive features are implemented using HTMX and <laughs> AlpineJS. So I'm going to show very little about the, how the code look like. So, um, so here is a. Uh, uh, the HX uh, attributes are for HTMX, so it can you can configure many kinds of like a trigger uh, conditions and which URL to fetch some uh, server-side response and uh, uh, what. Uh, other options like uh, the which HTTP method to use and which element to replace with the re result and uh, things like that. And uh, uh, in this case, I uh, registered must.js as uh, like a client side templating uh, extension to HTMX so that it fetches the JSON response from the server and it automatically converts it to HTML fragment and then inserts into the target element. So for example, in the layout, uh, you, I have uh, defined, like, uh, for example, the notification templates. And uh, these templates are used by must.js and then insert uh, transform by HTMX on the live. And uh, this uh, uh, attribute to it, X prefix, is, our, is for uh, Alpine.js, which uh, manages the uh, like a DOM level states. Uh, which allows you to implement like uh, animations and the check checkbox status and so on. Yeah. So and uh, in the server side, server side looks very simple. So for example, like uh, getting task count and getting task list, you just uh, speak out the uh, JSON, then all things are automatically handled in the uh, client side. Yeah. That's a quick demo. So yeah, this is just a backup. And uh, uh, so uh, with this uh, um, uh, AI monitor, I could resolve many kind of real world cases, such as like a hanging application due to silent termination of critical task and uh, uh, like a CPU exhaustion problems when, there, when a third party library spawned too many uh, like concurrent tasks uh, without limit and things like that. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, and many kind of these kind of issues. 
So in summary, uh, I think uh, uh, when you write complex applications, debuggability based on observability and reproducibility is the critical parts. And especially if we could do inspect the application in, on the live, it will be very helpful. And it is also important to preserve some critical task logs uh, for post-mortem analysis. And uh, I think I/O requires some unique tooling for achieve these kind of goals. And uh, I think we should continue to improve uh, like traceability and debugging features of async I/O in the standard library and as a third-party utilities as well. So uh, the, for the future work, I want to add a top like activity monitor of async I/O coroutines and task groups and task scopes and things like that. But I think we need more support in the async I/O, the standard library side for uh, additional traceability. And also I want to adopt the sub-interpreters, which will be introduced in 3.12 and 3.13 uh, for better reliability uh, and uh, performance optimization when you want to display like thousands of uh, tasks in the UI. And also I want to, as I already mentioned about the assumption of uh, task creation tracker, I want to visualize the tree of tasks and task groups uh, as a kind of holistic view. And uh, also, as a side work, I'm expanding uh, kind of structure, co structured concurrency support uh, for long-running task groups. So I'm going to propose some new kind of APIs to handle long-running server-oriented uh, task uh, with safe cancellation semantics, uh, which is introduced by task group API. Maybe we need some new APIs like exception generator instead of exception group. And uh, also there are some ongoing discussions of having uh, safe and synchronous cancellation of uh, tasks and so on. Still, uh, these are not finalized yet and under discussion and exploration with several uh, CPython core uh, dev team members. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, pretty much of my presentation today. So thank you for uh, attending and uh, uh, I hope that this uh, materials and the AI monitor could help you to write more stable async IO applications. Thank you. Thank you, Jungi Kim, for your presentation. If anyone has any questions, please raise your hand. Yeah, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I got already hit multiple times by async IO mainly on web API related to, I would say, starvation. Uh -huh. And I really like your tool, what you uh -huh. present. Uh -huh. And do you think this could be added as well with metrics capability? Do you know, like a Prometheus endpoint? Do you know, like, where you have already your telnet, you have your uh -huh. web? Because, do you know, in this case, you will be able to see, do you know, what are the number of tasks at any time which are like pending, uh -huh. finished, and I will be happy to help you. But, you know, that's something that I can see, you know, for live monitoring will be really helpful. Yeah, actually, I have got many like a feedback comments after PyCon US talk and KR talk about integration of Prometheus or open telemetry and things yeah. like that. And uh, yeah, I think it's a great way to expansion. Actually, I think we also need that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I think if we could do uh, like uh, attach some tags uh, on the task when we create the task and if we collect uh, like a statistics like uh, how long each task is uh, run and uh, how and uh, if there are any kind of outliers uh, uh, inside a specific group of task, uh, tag, tag of task and things like that. Yeah, I think that will be very uh, interesting. And yeah, thank you for your comment and uh, I always welcome contributions. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Any more questions? Ah, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, uh, one thing I'm um, not quite understand is, uh, is this uh, AI monitor intended to run in a production server or you use it in like experiment um, uh, debugging in a different? We are applying it in production. 
and with the full capability, and we had no, we have not seen any kind of unexpected side effect by uh, AI monitor because I try to eliminate any kind of memory leaks by observing actual memory usage it over time and things like that. I think it's pretty usable in production, yeah. But of course, it's an open source project, so I don't provide any kind of warranty or guarantee, <laughs> of course. Uh, but yeah, we are using it in production, yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, w one thing that looks scary is um, because you have this web UI, uh -huh. you can cancel some tasks remotely. Yeah, Do, yeah. Is it... Uh, um, th does it um, make a risk in your environment? So uh, the user interface is intended to be accessed inside the server using some like SSH SOX proxy or like uh, uh, things like that. So it is a, uh, like a limited for development and debugging purpose and uh, by default it opens the uh, interface only to localhost. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. One more question. Oh, yeah, so continuous the prior question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question is for me is reasonable. So do you have plan to provide some kind of read only mode for just observing the task? Uh, yeah, that, yeah, I think yeah. that's a great idea. Also I thought that if I like misclick cancel some critical task, it would be a big uh, like a disaster for production setup. So yeah, I think at least I need to add some confirmation dialogue at, or yeah, kind of read only mode. I, yeah, I think that's a very good idea. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. The time is up. We'll have to end here. Thank you very much for your talk. Everybody, please once again give a huge round of applause to our speaker. Thank you.